Welcome to another video. Let's do some linear algebra. C. Whenever or most often, when you get a question like this, it gives you vectors, a set of vectors, nothing missing, and you are asked to find if they are linearly dependent or linearly independent. So you just do a, uh, a linear combination and you're trying to find the, cons find the constants. If you find constants that are non-zero, then you go, okay, they are not linearly independent. But if everything must be zero, you say they are linearly independent. However, in this case, that's not, the, that's not what we have. We are told that the set is linearly dependent, but we don't know what K is. So, now, do not use the strategy you would use for showing whether they are linearly dependent or not. Don't use that strategy because you're not going to get all the answers you should get. Yeah, it might get a bit tricky. The better thing to do is to know that if a set of vectors is linearly dependent, any matrix they form will have a determinant of zero. Because the columns, because definitely all vectors, when you put vectors in a matrix, they have to show up as the columns of the matrix. So you notice that if they're not linearly independent, then the determinant you're going to get will be zero, ultimately. And that is the key to answering this question. Now that you've heard it, you might just try it on your own and tell me what K is. Let's get into the video. Like I said, our strategy is to make a matrix out of these vectors and then find the determinant of the matrix. If it is zero, then we're going to use that to get our k, which means we might be solving an equation. So let's make our matrix. So let's say let A be equal to the matrix such that these are the column vectors. You have k, negative one half, and negative one half. Remember, you must put all vectors as columns unless otherwise stated, okay? This goes in like this. Don't put them this way, you'll get a wrong answer, okay? They're always column. All vectors are column vectors, column vectors. Now, if they're supposed to be horizontal, you would be told or you would know what you're doing. If you don't know what you're doing, this is what you do. Okay, now let's go to the next one. It will be negative one half. You have k and you have negative one half. Mm. And then here you have negative one half, you have negative one half, and you have k. So this is the matrix, but we know something that the determinant of a, determinant of a is equal to zero if The vectors, the columns, the columns are linearly dependent, dependent. So we know the determinant of A is going to be zero if the columns are linearly dependent and we can start doing our cal calculation. For this determinant, I plan to use the method of cofactor expansion. So. I'm going to start, I'm going to go along the top row, so I have the determinant of A will be equal to K times, now we have K negative 1 over 2, let's write it well, so you have K negative 1 half, and I have negative 1 half K, nice, and then I go here. Now remember, it is plus, minus, plus, minus, you go, but this is going to be minus. So minus times minus is plus one half. And then the minors of this are one, uh, so it's negative one half, negative one half, negative one half K. So it's negative one half, negative one half, negative one half, and K. And then to the last one, this stays the way it is plus minus plus, so it's going to be minus one half, and this, the minors of this one will be 
negative one half is just a k here. So there's a k here, and this is negative one half, negative one half, negative one half. Nice. And that's it. And this is supposed to be equal to zero. So let's start. So this determinant, this is gonna be k times, k times k is k squared minus one, negative one half times negative one half is gonna be one fourth. We're done with this. Plus one half times, if you go this way, it's gonna be negative k over two, negative k over two, and this is gonna be minus, if you go this way, it's gonna be one over four. Okay, be careful with the minus sign. Negative one half times, this is gonna be one over four, and this is gonna be minus negative k over two, that's plus k over two and this should be zero. Okay, so let's start distributing. This is gonna be k cubed minus k over four. Um, this is minus k over four. This times this is minus one over eight. This is minus one over eight, and this times this is minus k over four, which is equal to zero. So but nothing is canceling out, and that's the annoying part. Okay, so I'm gonna multiply everything by eight so that this becomes eight k cubed minus, this is gonna be these two by eight minus two is equal to zero. Nice. Oh, okay. <laughs> now, I can now divide everything by two, which implies Let's put it this way. If I divide everything by two, I'm gonna have four K cubed minus three K minus one is equal to zero. Now, because I don't know what the answer to this is, I don't know the values of K, but I'm gonna test numbers. And using the rational root theorem, because I think for a problem like this in linear algebra, k is more likely to be a rational number. So I'm going to plug in one and see what happens. If I plug in k equals one, I'm gonna get four minus three minus one, that's zero. So I clearly know that one is one of my answers. I just need to find the other ones, okay? So now, since I know this, I can do synthetic division to find what is rest, what is by inspection, let's say by inspection k equals one is a solution or a root. So we already got one answer. Now let's do synthetic division and see what the other quadratic, what the quadratic is gonna be. So we're gonna put the, co the coefficients. So synthetic division, let me just write it here. So I'm gonna put all the coefficients. I'm dividing, I have four. I'm dividing by one. I already got one answer. So I'm gonna put one here. So I have, um, I have one. Coefficient of this is four. I don't have k squared, so I'm gonna put zero. I have k, I'm gonna put minus three, and I have minus one. Okay, so here I'm gonna put zero. You always start like this. Just put zero at the beginning. Four plus zero is four. Four times one is four. You put it here. Zero plus four is four. Four times one is four. Minus three plus four is one. One times one is one. Minus one plus one is zero. So that means this is the polynomial we now have. So what we have left is four x squared. See, this was four k cubed rather. This was four k cubed. So now this is four k squared, one degree lower, plus four k plus one. So we now have so we know that 4k squared plus 4k plus one is equal to zero. And you obviously can see that this is a perfect square, right? So this is 2k plus one all squared equals zero. And if you solve this for k for when this is gonna be zero, k has to be negative one half. So this implies that 2k 
plus 1 equals 0, which implies k equals negative 1 over 2. So the two possible values of k that we've obtained, we can say, therefore, k is equal to negative 1 half and 1. Never stop learning. Those who stop learning, stop living. Bye-bye.